Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 18.3 selection. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 18.3 you need to describe the theory of natural selection, describe the process of selective breeding and outline how selective breeding is used to improve crop plants and domesticated animals. For extended you also need to describe adaptation by natural selection with reference to the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria and outline the differences between natural and artificial selection. We'll begin with the theory of evolution by natural selection put forth by Charles Darwin in 1858. So individuals within a population of a species exhibit observable or phenotypic variations due to differences in genotype or genetic makeup. Some of these variations may make an individual more successful in its environment, while others could be detrimental. Now plants and animals tend to produce many offspring so as to increase the chances that at least some of them survive to a reproductive age and pass on their genetic material. This often results in intense competition for resources like food, water, territory and mates. Organisms that possess advantageous alleles or variations of genes that make them better suited to their environment have a greater chance of surviving and reproducing compared to others. These individuals pass on their alleles to to the next generation, resulting in, over many generations, an increase in the frequency of advantageous alleles and a decrease in the frequency of disadvantageous ones. Take a population of giraffes with significant variation in neck length. In an environment with limited trees or only very tall trees, the giraffes with the longest necks have an advantage over the others, in that they can reach leaves that shorter giraffes cannot. The long neck giraffes therefore have a greater chance of surviving and passing on their alleles to the next generation, some of which code for the beneficial trait. In this way, giraffes with long necks will become more common and eventually replace the less well-adapted variety. Varieties. Next, you need to know about selective breeding. So selective breeding, also known as artificial selection, is a process in which humans deliberately choose individuals with desirable traits and encourage them to reproduce, aiming to enhance those features in successive generations. Humans select individuals based on specific characteristics like fruit size or disease resistance. By carefully crossing these selected individuals, their desirable traits are more likely to be inherited by the offspring. This process the process is repeated over multiple generations, with each successive generation undergoing further selection to emphasise and refine the desired features. Through selective breeding, humans have been able to produce disease-resistant crop plants, increase crop yield, enhance the flavour and size of fruits and vegetables, and alter the colour and appearance of flowers. Artificial selection has also given rise to cows that produce lots of milk, pigs that produce lots of meat, chickens that lay large eggs, sheep with high quality wool, and aesthetically pleasing dogs and house cats. Okay, so that's everything for core, so we'll move on now to the extended content, beginning with the term adaptation. So adaptation is the process resulting from natural selection by which populations become more suited to their environment over many generations. The development of antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria is an example of adaptation by natural selection. When exposed to an antibiotic, a bacterium will occasionally mutate and develop features that allow it to survive the drug. The mutant bacterium can then reproduce while others are killed off, leading to the buildup of a resistant population over time. As a result, the antibiotic eventually becomes ineffective due to the widespread presence of resistant bacteria. Finally, you need to outline the differences between natural and artificial selection. So natural selection, as the name suggests, is driven by natural processes, whereby the best adapted organisms are more likely to survive and pass on their alleles. It's gradual, meaning changes occur over an extremely long period of time, and it helps to maintain genetic variation within a population. Artificial selection, by comparison, causes variation to be lost, as only the individuals that possess characteristics valued by humans are retained. This may cause problems in the future, if environmental conditions change, as traits that may have otherwise enabled the species to adapt and survive are no longer present in the gene pool. Artificial selection occurs as a result of human intervention and is driven by human preferences and economics. It's also a much quicker process than natural selection. 
Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 18.3, selection. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 19.1, energy flow.